This is Crystal Fenn from MedPage Today. I'm speaking with Dr. Mitchell Levy about the early look at the surviving sepsis campaign data that was presented here at the Society of Critical Care Medicine. So, Dr. Levy, how far have you gotten in the goals of the campaign to reduce mortality from sepsis? We currently have 14,000 patients in the database. And as of right now, the data from the networks look like we have about a 6% absolute risk reduction in mortality uh, with an associated increase in compliance. So, for instance, in the Spanish study that's in revision in JAMA, there was a 5.4% absolute risk reduction in mortality with an associated 10% increase in compliance across both the resuscitation and the management bundle. So, you mentioned that you're starting to see some fairly consistent results putting mortality rates at about, uh, in the teens, maybe 11% or a little higher, whereas the, historically it's been much higher than that. What, what can you say so far? I think it's important to remember that when we first started the campaign in 2002, when you start a clinical trial, you would power the trial for a mortality in the placebo group of 30 to 35%. We are, over the last two years, three years, where we're seeing our data from the campaign consistently in small community hospitals, in large academic medical centers, and in networks, seeing a mortality rate in severe sepsis in the teens. In Colorado, for instance, the mortality rate is 11.4%. So I think one of the important messages of the campaign is keep track of your mortality rate, and it really should be consistently lower than 20% in patients with severe sepsis. Compared historically to? A mortality rate in the 30 to 35 percent. And so do you expect that the campaign will reach its goal of a 25 percent reduction in sepsis mortality by 2009? Well, I certainly would like to believe that. I think that we would be happy with any statistically significant reduction in mortality. So yes, I would like to see a 10 percent absolute risk reduction with a 25 percent relative risk reduction. At the same time, if I said at the end of this that we had a 7% absolute risk reduction in mortality, which led to 2,000 lives being saved globally, I would be very happy and I would consider that a success. And what are some of the challenges facing uh, implementation of the guidelines? The biggest challenge facing the implementation of the guidelines is clinical inertia. It's so much easier for us as clinicians to just keep doing the same thing we've done over and over again. And the other obstacle that we all face is the academic debate that goes on. Should I use steroids? Shouldn't I? Is a CVP right? Is it wrong? Sometimes we get more lost in academic debate than just coming forward, choosing our best guess at what's good for our patients, keeping track of what we do, and applying it on a regular basis. Thank you, Dr. Levy. I'm Crystal Fenn, MedPage Today.